Uh, Bortle here back from the Epic Cards and Games Dawn and Majesty Case Tournament. We have here the deck that went undefeated 5-0 in Swiss. Jerry, welcome back to the channel, man. This is your infamous Life Twin Eldritch deck. How are you today? I'm good, Bortle. How are you doing today, man? I'm uh, doing great, man. Funny enough, I bet a lot of people were expecting heroes from you. What made you decide to play this deck for this event? I just really like the uh, the Live Twin engine, man. I think it's a cool deck. I like the artwork, and, you know, uh, until we get... Uh, burst of destiny i think i'm gonna put heroes on hold for right now man oh yeah there's some major uh major hype for that set especially for heroes right aren't they getting their new like dragoon card yeah yeah we get the new fusion monster and new main deck monster in the trap obviously you went undefeated in swiss um how'd you do in the top cut top cut i lost in top eight uh played against uh matthew kirkland who i I actually beat him in Swiss, but he actually got me in top cut. Oh, he got the revenge clap. Uh, what deck was he yeah. using? Uh, he was using Dragon Links. Cool thing is, uh, guys, uh, Jerry did defeat Eric Menace, um, his uh, Phantom Knight deck, which is on the channel as well. So how was that matchup like? Oh, man, it was pretty interesting. He had a lot of gas, but I actually, like, this deck plays so many hand traps, defensive cards, that I was able to kind of stop him from really getting started. So he never really had a chance to play his cards because of uh, all my hand traps and things, but... I'm sure if he had, he probably would have had, you know, he would have got me. Uh, before we start the actual deck profile portion of the video, do you have any shout outs, man? As always, everybody from Epic, uh, Cards and Games, the local that I go to, in my you know, opinion, is one of the best locals uh, in Texas. Also, uh, I got a friend, David Thickpen, Tyler Brown. I always shout them out, and, and that'll be it for me. Sweet. Without further ado, please take it away with the rest of your deck profile. So we start off with three uh, Live Twin Little. And three live twin kiss kill. These are basically your tour guys of the deck. You summon either the blue and special summon the red, or you summon the red and special summon the blue, and then you go on your place from there. Next, we have one live twin kiss kill frost and one live twin lilla treat. Most of these are your extenders. If you have a blue on the field, lilla or a treat, you can special summon frost from your hand. Uh, if you have Kiss a Kill or Frost, you can spell Summon Tree from your hand. I only play one of these each. A lot of people who run this deck play multiple Frost. I personally don't think you need to use her effect uh, multiple times in, in one duel. If you've used it once, you've already got your advantage. Uh, and you just continue to get advantage throughout the, the game as well. Uh, next, we have three uh, Ash Blossoms, which is you know just a standard hand trap. Uh, it's good against pretty much everything. Uh, Ghost Bell, two Ghost Bells. I don't see a lot of people running Ghost Bell anymore, but I think it's good against the prank, um, prank matchup, dry turn matchup, and the it can be decent against the tribal raid matchup if they ever use Revolt. I play two Baylor, which is also good against tries. And next we have the the newest card, the Live Twin Sunny Snitch, which uh, in my opinion really brought this deck up uh, a notch. Essentially, it's either a starter or an extender. So if you have uh, one of your live twin Lillas or live twin kiss of kills and you normal summon which this deck actually baits out almost every hand trap in you know in the game uh so if they ever use a hand trap Baylor, uh, ass blossom imperm anything like that you can use snitch to grab one of your extenders or if it's in your hand and you don't have anything you can just activate it and get one of the other uh the starter twins and just try to come ball from there so it's really good and it also burns your opponent and gains your life points which Sticks with the theme of the deck of you gaining advantage while your opponent loses advantage. It's definitely a welcome addition to the deck. Next, we have one live twin home. I only play one home for right now. That, that'll be bumped up to three when Burst of Destiny comes out. But for right now, uh, live twin home is actually there in case you get Nibiru. So it's one of our only ways to play through Nibiru. If they Nibiru your, your initial combo, you activate home, discard a card, and then you bring out a small twin, link the token and the twin off, and then you'll have your setup for next turn. Uh, next is three secret passwords. Secret password is good because it searches all your uh, live twin spell traps. Uh, so it essentially gives you three additional copies of either live twin snitch or live twin home. So that's one reason I don't really run multiple homes as well. Next, I run three forbidden droplet. Forbidden droplet is actually really good in this deck. It has a lot of good synergy with the Smaller twins and the larger twins. Uh, I actually use this card to out big boards and continue with my plays. So one thing that you can do in this deck is uh, normal summon one of the uh, live twins and activate the effect. And if they have anything like a monster on board, if they imperm Valor or even use like 
a monster like Savage Dragon to negate. You just chain droplets, uh, get rid of the monster that you normal summon, negate whatever uh, they have on their field that's causing you a problem. The twin resolves. You get the opposite twin out, and then that twin's effect activates the special summon you the other one, and then you just keep going. And with the larger twins, it just kind of lets you reuse both twins' effects without having to uh, get rid of it or without your opponent having to get rid of it. I also play one Monster Reborn. It's really good whenever you get stopped as well with things like Nibiru or with things like uh, Ghost Bell. It just allows you to go ahead and activate it and bring back whatever uh, twin you're missing to keep going with your play. Next, I play more Hand Traps in Infinite and Permanence. And next, I play the Eldritch lined up so i played two lord uh two elden i don't i think three elden is a little bit too much you really just want to see one piece of this engine uh to get started and then i played three garlic sanguine i played two conquistador and two hot credo the only thing that's not really standard about this is most people play three of either hot credo or conquistador i only played two and two because i don't want it to uh be too big of an engine I want to really concentrate on the live twin engine. Alrighty, so obviously it's a perfect 40 right here, and you did explain that you wanted to play like the very minimum engine of the Eldritch cards, so you don't uh, obviously uh, see too much of it. Did the two conflict with each other, or you had to play the two Eldritches because of like cards like Call by the Grave? They didn't really conflict. They actually complement each other really well. Um, usually anything that was going to interrupt your live twin play would have normally been used for your Eldritch play. So if they asked you, you almost good to go like certainly good to go with your sanguine on the next turn so they complement each other also uh with the addition of live twin sunny snitch it gives you another continuous spell on on board to you know tribute for uh golden lord and special some of them back so it's just extra fodder it seems like everything in this deck uh just complements each other the only thing that you really have to remember to do is when you're actually going through your uh interruptions on your opponent's turn Always make sure you bring back your live twin uh, first from grave to either get a pop or a draw before you activate your same queen because after that you're just locked into zombies. Oh yeah, that's true. Man, perfect synergy here. And uh, yeah, if it's cool, uh, you run down your extra deck? Yeah, so I play a standard uh, three live uh, evil twin Lilla. I play three evil twin kiss a kill. I play uh, one unchained abomination which has uh, amazing synergy with the deck as well. You can essentially have Abomination on field, and if you have Evil Twin Kiss a Kill, whenever you bring back Lilla, uh, Lilla pops a card, and then in turn you'll be able to pop a card with Abomination, as well as being able to uh, pop cards at, at the end phase every turn. is just really, really good. Uh, also, I play one Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. You make him pretty consistently since you have Eldest the Golden Lord. And your, you can use Elich, the Golden Lord, your, uh, your Golden Land Traps, or your Evil Twin Engine to go into it. And if you pump them by 1,500 a lot of the times, they won't really have an out to this card. Because not only will, can he not be targeted or destroyed by card effects, he's a 4,500 attacking monster. So normally to get over him, they have to have something like um, Access Code. And if you attack, if they don't get them out in time, if you attack again and pop them to 6,000, there's really not a lot that they can usually do about this card. Uh, next, I play one Nightmare Unicorn, which is standard. It's just standard interruptions uh, removal. And then I have the one Nightmare Phoenix, just in case I'm ever locked into some kind of floodgate. It helps. I play one M Duck, the World Chalice Dragon. It just helps me get my uh, Golden Land traps off the field whenever. Uh, I've used them already, and I don't need them there anymore, and I want to use their effects in grave. I also play one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, and this card is just here to help me play against uh, cards that the twins have a, a hard time against. So monsters and things that are unaffected by other cards, things like Dragoon, it can be an out for that. You just tribute their cards along with your own. Next, I just play the, uh, the Zeus engine. I play one... Uh, cavalry, I play one downer magician, and I also play the one Zeus, uh, which just makes it, you know, makes a four material Zeus, which is really hard to deal with in the later stages of the game. Oh, yeah, Zeus is pretty powerful. Uh, what are your thoughts on like uh, maybe Axis Code? Could you have like fit that in here, or did you rather have uh, all this extra bonus from like the Abomination and the uh, Soldier of Chaos is actually pretty decent too? 
Yeah, I just yeah, I I think Axis Code would definitely be good in this deck. It was personal preference for me to play Black Muscle Soldier Soldier of Chaos just because it's my favorite card. So um no other reason other than that. So if you have Axis Code and you, you wanna play it, I, I definitely would. Nice. And uh speaking about your, your side deck over here, uh, it looks like somewhat standard, however, um a lot of people seem to be cutting like Lancy and stuff. So, uh, would you like to explain side deck? So I, I played three evenly matched. Uh, this deck doesn't really OTK that well, so you don't really need your battle phase. So that's why I played evenly matched twin twisters. I play for mainly things like the prank kid matchup or anything that has floodgates that I would normally be able to get a, get around. Uh, harpies is harpies is just for back row decks and the three Lancia. I just made that decision because of the tribe brigade matchup it can struggle against that uh, matchup if you don't open your hand traps like you, you should just having extra hand traps in uh, in addition to all the hand traps you already run just you know it just helps out tank with tops is also just another kind of standard card that you can throw into control decks to kind of break your opponent's field and then I play Imperial Order and Red Reboot, one for spell traps, and then the other for trap decks. Red Reboot is really good because this deck goes into Zeus really easily. As long as you have a twin, you can kind of just go into Zeus and then clear their field, whatever the trap they had set. And then the Drolling Lock is mainly for just the dry trying matchup. Sorry you didn't get to pass the top eight. However, going uh, undefeated in Swiss is still pretty decent, especially taking everyone from surpri- you know by surprise with this cool live twin lh variant oh yeah yeah it was it was a good time man the tournament itself was fun it was really well ran so you know, i don't really have any regrets i just look forward to taking this deck and making improvements on it and and having fun with it for the rest of the season thanks again for being on the channel uh thanks border and listeners if you're not a part of Bortle nation sub for Bortle, it's that easy and it's free oh god yes Bortle out